In this video, we're going to be bringing autumn to my big boa constrictors enclosure. There's a number of ways we can do it, and you can do it too. So this is my big boa constrictors enclosure as it stands right now. She's got a big water dish, loads of branches to actually climb on. He absolutely loves climbing. We do have a little problem with this boa constrictor at the moment. He keeps trying to dangle his tail between the actual back wall of the enclosure and this log. It just makes a massive, awful, creaking noise. He can do it. He can get his whole body down there. He is so powerful. His body is just solid muscle that he actually does do it really well. He's got a little bit of a platform over this side. Now, that's just for if he wants to get that little bit warmer, he has the ability to go up there and get that little bit warmer. But he's had this enclosure now, including the Buddha, for the best part of a year. It's time to add a little bit of a change to it. <sighs> We want to try and stop boredom before boredom actually does become a thing. Let's face it, they don't have TikTok or Facebook. They can't keep themselves amused, so we have to do it. So I'm going to create an autumn winterland. Into the living room, there's those two enclosures. Look at him. Look at him. Boom. But, poof. Check out all of those leaves all over the floor. We need to take a little bit of this and add it into this. How are we going to do that? Well, let's have a look. We've got a lot of leaf litter on the floor. He's gonna be getting a lot of leaf litter. So I'm gonna show you how to prepare the leaf litter to go into the enclosure, how to dry it out, all that sort of stuff. There's also a lot of branches falling. We've got a big storm going on at the minute. Storm Barbara! And uh, a lot of branches are falling onto the ground. So we're gonna add a few more branches into his enclosure, uh, just to sort of give him that little bit of extra climbing area because he does love his climbing. And we're gonna up the humidity inside his enclosure. The fresh humidity is just gonna help benefit him that little bit more. Let's start with the leaves. I tend to only collect oak leaves because I can have so many different uses for the oak leaves. I can use them in my bioactive enclosures, I can use them for my millipede, I can use them for my isopod and my springtail colonies. I just have so many uses for oak leaves. Now you need to go out to the forest, the woods, anywhere like that and collect some leaves. Now you can't just grab any old leaves that you see lying around. You need to make sure there's no fertilizers been sprayed over that area throughout its entire life. Quite simply because it gets absorbed into the tree roots if it got laid down there 10 years ago. So it's inside the tree, which is inside the leaves. The leaves go down onto the floor. You've got an insecticide, pesticide, fertilized leaf, which you don't really want. You want to go somewhere totally organic. You want to make sure it's not a dog walker's sort of path. You don't want any dog urine or feces to have ever been laid in the area that you're collecting the leaves. And finally, you want to make sure you're actually allowed to pick up some leaves. It can be a bit of a challenge to do all them. I just tend to go to my local forest, totally out of the way, in the back of the forest, off the beaten track, away from any dog traffic. And that's where I tend to collect all mine from. You can do this with your family, your kids, anything like that. It's absolutely amazing. Make a fun little day of it. Get yourself a carrier bag full of leaves and bring them back. Then you're going to need to sterilise them. There's a couple of ways you can sterilise these. You can either boil them or whack them in the oven for 20 minutes. I prefer the oven trick, I just get an oven tray, put some leaves on the oven, whack it in the oven. I tend to do it at about 150 for around about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I sometimes leave the door open as well. You, it's a bit of a fire risk, let's just say that. So uh, just take extra precautions, have a fire extinguisher on hand if you need to. Now you can just let these air dry out, any bad ones, chuck them away. Obviously, these are going in a snake enclosure, so it's no risk of any ingestion or anything like that. Once they're finished in the oven, I get them out, I lay them down, and let them come down to room temperature before adding them into the enclosure. I cut off all the sharp edges, if there is any sharp stems or stalks or anything like that, I cut all them off. Then we start adding them to the enclosure. Now you can do this in a number of different ways that you want. You can either put them all in one corner, so that you can just go into that corner and just have a mooch around and just add that little bit of enrichment, that little bit of excitement. You can add a thick layer throughout the entire enclosure. That way you've got to go through it and it's something new, it's something different. And it's something to get his mind working a little bit more. You can scatter a few just here and there. You can put it so it's all just in one hide. You can do whatever you want. You can do so many different things. You can do one thing one month and then another thing another month and just keep alternating it just to give that extra little bit of enrichment for your animal. For me, I'm just gonna scatter it throughout the enclosure. If you do use a heat bulb of some description, just keep in mind the distance between the heat bulb and the actual dried leaves. Dried leaves, again, can be a fire hazard, so just take extra caution. I would have said while you were out in the actual woods, you could have grabbed some logs and branches and stuff like that. However, it can take an awful long time for those to be actual ready and prepared, ready to go into your boa constrictor's enclosure. The way I prepared these ones, I collected months and months ago. I just left them to dry. Quite simply, I just left them. I put them inside this big Repti Breeze and just left them. That's it. 
Before they go into an enclosure, I will cover them in F10 disinfectant just to make sure that I'll let it air out for another day before they go in, which is what I've done with these ones right now. So let's move over and start adding a couple of these into the enclosure as well. Knowing Popcorn's personality, I have to make sure that these are extremely secure. Not just they're not gonna fall on him, but he loves to climb all over them as well. So I have to make sure they're sturdy enough and they are proper wood, not rotten in any way, so that he can't just lie on top of them and then they break through or anything like that. I have to make sure this is secure enough for him to climb on and for him to knock and rub against, because he does rub against these when he's shedding or anything like that. Now, we're gonna add some fake plants into the enclosure. Now, yes, I do promote live plants wherever possible. The live plants are just absolutely amazing. They suck in all the bad air that's within the enclosure and give out oxygen. They improve the air quality both in your home and in their home. It, live plants are just absolutely amazing. It's like a work of art in your living room, just growing constantly. It looks absolutely amazing. But with big bodied snakes like boa constrictors, they like to destroy everything. Plus, I've got these two big live plants from Swell Reptiles that they kindly sent me. So I'm gonna be adding them into the enclosure as well. The benefit with these is they can hide some nastiness within the enclosure, hide some screws and stuff like that. They can add a bit of shelter, a little bit of cover for the snake. They can make a little hide out of it. It just adds that little bit of extra appearance for your boa constrictors enclosure. So we're gonna add these in in a few different places. We've got two big plants, we're gonna make the most of them. And then the next thing is humidity. Check this out, I love live plants so much that I've actually invested in a rack to grow my own plants. We've got a couple down there, now, they were just tiny little seeds when I first got them from Reptile Systems. Then a few more plants over here, a few nice weeping dews, bit of a pothos sort of style. We've got a spider plant back there, that one's a bearded dragon sort of food plant, I think it's just like a crest. A couple of more spider plants and pothos is there. Up here, you can see these got planted two days ago. Check them out, they're already starting to grow. We have got rocket we have got mustard we have got lettuce and it's all starting to grow like i say it was only two days old that's all this is and it's already starting to go that is just bearded dragon food then over there more spider plants some more plants to go inside bioactive enclosures granted that one's a bit dead we've just repotted it to hope that helps then the big repti breeze we go into my bedroom and that big plant up there, again, just a big weeping dew, that's growing, ready to go inside that big Calat Versicolor uh, Repti Breeze. Some more bearded dragon food. Now this one was just a little project to see if it would work. Something for me and the lad to actually do, to grow these bits and bobs, just to see if he would eat them. And it's at the stage now where we're taking the leaves off, we're feeding them to Diego, my bearded dragon, and he absolutely loves them. Then we've got a couple of grasses that were growing just there. They're gonna be, for that one, which is our big leopard gecko bioactive build. So subscribe if you want to see that big leopard gecko build. We're always doing content similar to that. So please subscribe. Let's get back to him. Now it's time to add that autumn boost in humidity. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can move your water bowl slightly closer to the heat source or to the hot side of the enclosure. That'll just promote higher evaporation of your water that's in your water dish. Or you can just mist it down that little bit regular. You don't want to go over the top. You don't want to risk any sort of respiratory infection for the species. Instead of me doing one big spray down once every two weeks, I'm actually going to change the misting cycle to add a continuous humidity. You think with one big spray it's going to spike and then it's just going to plateau down and stay level again. If I'm misting three times in that fortnight, the humidity is just going to be a lot more stable throughout that period. Now I'm not going to do a big mist like I normally do. It's just going to be three light mists once every two weeks. And after that, you're gonna end up with this. <laughs> 